Last time on Punctuation. Inspector Brackett has brought the map back to Professor Wereshawn to help him find out what the message is on the map. Sean promises to look it over and try to decode the message. And now, part six of Punctuation. Okay, let's see what I can do. Yes, I did it. All right, what does the message say? Under this tree is a treasure, and this treasure lies a power for sure. A power so great we expect you'll endure. It is immense and grandeur. Hopefully you will not shun this great power of punctuation. Whoa, this is unreal. These pictures depict something that I've seen before. I think I know where the treasure is. I must tell Professor Word about this. Hi everyone, welcome to Sean Allen Films, the educational series. I'm Sean Allen. This is episode six of Punctuation. In today's episode, we're going to be learning about the apostrophe. In the last episode, we learned about commas. If you want to see that episode, click the annotation above, or if you can't see it, click the link down below entitled Previous Episode. So if you're ready, then let's get started. So what is an apostrophe? Well, to put it simply, it indicates possession. Oh, cool. <laughs> this is my possession. This YouTube book. Wow, that is pretty cool. But uh, that's not the type of possession I'm referring to. Yes, it is correct when we say an apostrophe indicates possession. It also has another job, but we'll get to that later. Let's look at an example. You are looking at Sean's homemade rocket. In this sentence, the apostrophe is used to indicate that the homemade rocket belongs to Sean. So when is it appropriate to add the apostrophe S? Well, as you can see in the name Sean, well, that's my name, that my name doesn't really end in the letter S. So we add the apostrophe S to the end of the name. Now, here's an interesting question. What was to happen if the name or word actually ends with the letter S? Easy. Just put the apostrophe behind the S, like this. This would usually be the case if the noun is plural or if there's more than one item. Want an example? Okay. The cat's food bowls are full. Okay, for those of you who don't know, Sean has six cats. Yep, Sylvester, Simon, Spidey, Minnie Sue, Shadow, and Spalding. Since we are talking about six cats and these are their bulls, then we have the apostrophe after cats, since it's plural. Now there can also be what is known as a joint possession. In other words, there might be two subjects that have the same feelings or objects. Here's an example.
You could also use apostrophes for compound nouns. An example could be son-in-law's car. Simple, right? You could also use an apostrophe towards an indefinite pronoun. This is a type of pronoun that doesn't refer to a specific person or thing. Something's wrong here. See what I mean? Now, a few minutes ago, Professor Words said that the apostrophe has a second job. And let me just say it does, and it's a big one. What is it? Well, it is used to emit letters or numbers. Omit means to get rid of. Here's an example. Hey, that should be an example right there. In the sentence, here's an example, I'm actually saying here is an example. The apostrophe is removing the I in is and keeping the S. It is then placed next to the word here with the apostrophe included. So the sentence now says, here's an example. How about another example? These quarters were made in 65. In this sentence, the apostrophe is taking the place of the first two numbers for the year the quarters were made. If I were to remove the apostrophe, the sentence would say, these quarters were made in 1965. See, the apostrophe is a powerful tool. Now the apostrophe doesn't have to be used for just the S. In fact, it can be used for other letters and even words. Some examples would include can't for cannot, won't for would not, should have for should have, isn't for is not, and well, the list goes on. But just like all punctuation marks, it has its limitations. First off, try not to use an apostrophe when you are using pluralized numbers, letters, abbreviations, and other words. We'll be using examples to explain what I mean. It's in the 100s today. In this sentence, we are using a pluralized form of the number 100. We don't need an apostrophe here. Now, the sentence could also say it's 100 degrees Fahrenheit today. Both sentences are saying relatively the same thing. So both sentences, in this case, are correct. The student got mostly C's on his exams. As you can see in the sentence, C's doesn't need an apostrophe because it's a pluralized letter. There's more than one C. Trust me, you could do better than the student, right? Oh. And one quick tip, you can use apostrophes for lowercase letters and the capital letters A and I. Got it? I hope so. An abbreviation is where we use one of the first letters for a certain name. For example, if we wanted to abbreviate Doctor of Philosophy, we would do PhD. See? I bet you didn't know what PhD stood for. Well, you do now. An example for not using an apostrophe for a pluralized abbreviation would be, he will be getting his PhD soon. See, it's plural, but we don't need an apostrophe. And lastly, don't use apostrophes that are used to pluralize more than one word. An example could be, you have too many ands in the essay. Now you may have noticed that and is italicized. This is for when you are typing out our example. Now we could use an apostrophe only if the word is separated with quotation marks. All right, I'm gonna cheat here, guys. I'm gonna look at my script because this next paragraph I'm gonna read to you guys, it's gonna be a big one, so excuse me for a second. Remember to use apostrophes wisely. Very, very true. There may be times where it may or may not be necessary in a sentence. It will be especially difficult if you are typing your reports essays, exams, or speeches on a laptop or computer. Every once in a while, the computer might think you meant to use an apostrophe where it shouldn't be. Oops. That's why it's always a good idea to have already written out your papers before typing it in. That way you can catch the spelling, grammar, and punctuation errors before the computer does. And now I am done looking at the script because we are finished with episode six of Punctuation. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. Oh, and by the way, if you want to review anything that was covered in today's video, just simply rewatch it. It's just that simple. In our next video, we're going to be looking at parentheses. Before you go, please be sure to hit the thumbs up button, favorite this video, 
and leave a comment down below telling us what you thought about today's show. Be sure to also check out Sean Allen Films The Vlog Series and Sean Allen Films The Disneyland Video Series. And please follow the official Twitter and Facebook pages of Sean Allen Films The Educational Series. All the links are down below in the description of this video. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more educational videos. Well, that's all for today. Until next time, keep on learning. What has happened? An intruder has just ripped apart Professor Wirt's office, and he's left a listening device. Who is this intruder? Will he find out about the map and the treasure along with Sean and Professor Wirt? Find out next time on Punctuation.